Symptoms of cattle lice are rough hair coats, rubbing or scratching, hair on fences, hair loss, scaly skin, and raw skin. However, other factors can mimic lice infestations such as natural shedding, poor nutrition, mineral deficiency, and other diseases. Cattle lice can impact weight gain, reduce milk production, can cause blood loss or anemia, and in severe cases can actually cause animal mortality. There have been many studies conducted over the years evaluating the impact of lice on cattle. Drummond in 1981 indicated that all four species of lice in the U.S. cause losses exceeding $126 million per year. Nebraska studies conducted by Campbell in 1992 found that high numbers of chewing and sucking lice populations, more than 10 lice per square inch, impacted weight gains of calves by 0.21 pounds per day. Kuntz, 1994, stated that losses of 0.7 pounds per head in average daily gain by heavily infested feeder cattle have been reported, but well-nourished cattle with light to moderate louse infestations suffered little or no loss. There are factors which can increase lice populations. They are colder temperatures, longer hair coats, drier skin, animal crowding, animals in poor condition, and in poor nutrition, and chronic carriers, as well as applying treatments a little bit too early. There are factors that can decrease lice populations, such as warmer temperatures and sunlight, shorter hair coat, animal grooming, and the increase of oil from the skin, or sebum. There are four species of cattle lice that can be found on Nebraska cattle. They are the chewing louse, commonly referred to as the little red, and three sucking lice species, the short nose, long nose, and little blue. The little red chewing louse is rather small, only one to two millimeters in length, reddish brown in color, and feeds on skin scales, scruff, and hair. This slide shows the cattle chewing louse on the, the hair surface, and notice the transverse red bands that run across the top of the, the body. This is a good characteristic for identifying this particular louse species. The life cycle from egg to egg of an adult is 28 to 29 days in average. And this louse species can reproduce asexually or without mating. And it can sometimes account for the large increases in this particular louse population during the winter time. The louse is normally found on the rump, the back, sides, shoulders, and crest and sides of the neck. The short-nosed cattle louse is the largest sucking louse species, ranges from 3 to 5 millimeters in length. The life cycle of egg to egg of female averages about 28 days. This particular species can survive off the host for less than 2 to 3 days. Large numbers of this species cause the animal to have a greasy appearance, can cause anemia, and certainly weight loss. This louse can be found on the withers, top of the neck, pole, tail head, and the perineum. The long-nosed cattle louse is about 2.5 millimeters in length, has a distinctive long head and a bluish color. The life cycle, egg to egg of female, averages about 25 days. This louse species can occur in very high numbers and on heavily infested cattle, certainly can uh, impact weight gains and lower vitality. This is one of the most frequently found louse species on cattle. This louse species can be found on the top line, the withers, top of the neck, dewlap, sides, belly, and the perineum of infested cattle. The little blue louse is the smallest of the sucking louse species, only about one to two millimeters in length, and is also bluish in color. This species will normally occur in dense patches uh, with adults, nymphs, and eggs on heavily infested animals. And you can see this calf right here in the picture is evidence of that. 
The life cycle egg to egg of female normally takes 21 to 22 days. This species is one of the most abundant of the sucking lice species, moves less than the other cattle lice, and high populations can certainly impact weight gains. Hair loss and bare spots can often be observed with high populations of this louse. The little blue louse is normally found on the upper shoulder, neck, head, and dewlap areas of infested cattle. To confirm the presence of cattle lice, producers should restrain animals in a chute and use a two-handed hair parting technique to locate and identify lice populations. Three sites that are easy to check are the muzzle, shoulder, and top line of an animal. A magnifying glass and a high intensity light will aid in this process. Lice infestations ranging from one to five per square inch is considered a light infestation, six to 10 a moderate population, and more than 10 lice per square inch would be considered a very heavy population. There are two types of control products available, non-systemic, which work by contact, and systemic products, which work by being absorbed internally into the animal. There are some non-systemic porons available that will provide control with just one application. And here's a, a group of those particular products listed uh, on this slide. While other non-systemic porons will require two applications normally spaced 14 days apart. And here's a list of six of those products. So please check your label when you're selecting uh, your non-systemic product. There is one product that contains an insect growth regulator called diflubenzeron and also a synthetic pyrethroid insecticide. An insect growth regulator works by disrupting the growth stages of the cattle louse. Systemic indecticide porons effectively kill both chewing and sucking lice. Some indecticides have slaughter withdrawal restrictions, and some are rain fast while others are not. Please check the label of the product that you plan to use. There are indecticide injection formulations available, but these work better on sucking lice than on chewing lice. The use of any indecticide between November 1st and February 1st is not advised as they may cause a host parasite reaction in the animal by killing cattle grubs that may be developing in the esophagus and spinal canal of an animal. If a systemic indecticide was applied during fall weaning, this will not be a problem. Producers who did not use a in systemic indecticide during fall weaning should consider using only a non-systemic control product during the November 1st to February 1 timeframe. Successful lice control depends greatly on application timing. Many producers will administer an indecticide treatment at fall weaning, usually in late September or October, with intentions of controlling internal parasites, cattle grubs, and cattle lice. These fall applications may reduce numbers that may not totally remove the infestation. A warm fall like we experienced in 2016 may slow down the developing lice numbers. Livestock producers who use this management strategy should monitor their cattle for signs of lice, especially during the months of December, January, and February. If replacement animals are brought into a herd during the winter months, they should be examined for lice. If lice are present, the animals should be isolated and treated before introduction into the existing herd. For current Nebraska control recommendations, please refer to EC 1550, Nebraska Management Guide for Insect Pests of Livestock and Horses. This can be accessed at entomology.unl.edu forward slash livestock. And please remember, when applying any insecticide control product, please read and follow the label instructions. If you would like more information or have questions regarding cattle lice, I can be reached at 308-696-6721 or by email at dboxler1 at unl.edu.